everyone, it's Aaron here from Rudy Visuals. Hope everyone is doing well. In today's video, we are reviewing this guy. This is the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 and this is the E-mount version for full frame Sony cameras. But this lens is also available for Canon, Nikon and I believe Leica mounts as well. This has been our main daily driver for I think about well over nine months now and we've used this on all kinds of different shoots uh, from interviews, events, short films, studio photography. We actually own one of these personally and also use a couple of these at our day jobs as well. That's how much we love it. So let's take a look at some sample footage and images and for context all of the footage you see will have been shot on either the Sony FX6 or the a7S III and all stills were mostly shot on the a7R III. think let us know in the comment section down there below and by the way if you are new here consider hitting that subscribe button to see more. Now I think most of you who are watching already understand the benefits of a 2470 with a constant f2 point aperture their versatility and reliability to just do everything well and just get the job done it's no wonder why so many people have a 2470 in their camera bag of some kind from beginners enthusiasts all the way to seasoned working professionals and for Sony e-mount in particular the Sigma offers a really nice middle ground option between more budget entry level options like the Tamron and Samyang offerings and more premium options like the Sony G Master lenses. By the way, links to our reviews of the Tamron and Sony lenses will be in the description below. So this is a lens that has actually been around now for a good three years or more I think and can be bought these days for just over a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars in the US. And keep in mind the Sony 24-70 G Master 2 is more than double at around $2,300 and even the G Master 1 is still around $1,600. So those are really really expensive lenses that as you are paying for that sweet first party Sony badge. But in my humble opinion you're not getting double the lens. So right off the bat a big benefit of this lens is that you're saving a really big chunk of change by going with the Sigma over the G Masters. The other good news is that for your money, you're getting a lens that feels like a typical Sigma art lens. If you've ever handled one before, you'll know that they definitely punch above their weight when it comes to build quality. It really is a nice looking and nice feeling lens. It has a metal construction, a metal mount. It's got weather sealing gasket and it's also around 800 grams. So it isn't light, but it has that sort of reassuring solid heft to it. It definitely feels like a premium product. The lens also has a locking switch, a focus lock and AF MF switch and also an 82mm filter thread size. Now for me and the kinds of video and photos that I take both professionally and recreationally the focal range of 2470 is just perfect. It'll cover probably 95% of what I need and that's really the big selling point of zoom lenses like this. Not needing to carry multiple prime lenses with you all the time. I can literally just go to most shoots with just this one single lens whether I'm covering an event, filming a talking head interview or shooting portraits in the studio or even shooting YouTube videos like this I'm actually filming this video right now on the FX3 with one of these lenses as well. It's really the versatility of this lens is it's what's so great for me and one of the main reasons why I upgraded to this and sold my old Tamron 28-75 was that I was finding that having that extra reach of 75 millimeters was just not really all that useful but having 28 on the wide end instead of 24 was 
frustrating at times, it may not sound like much, but having that slight extra wider focal length has come up really clutch for me in a lot of situations where I've been in slightly more cramped filming spaces. So 24 versus 28 has been a really nice upgrade for me. And one major reason why I'd recommend the Sigma over both versions of the Tamron 2875. And honestly, it really isn't that much more expensive. Another big reason for upgrading from my Tamron was the better overall image quality. So I was finding that my Tamron left a little bit to be desired in terms of consistency across the focal range, sharpness wise, and it didn't have the most smoothest bokeh either. It's quite the opposite actually. This Sigma lens though, however, has been a really noticeable big improvement when it comes to things like corner to corner sharpness, which is fantastic, all throughout the range as you expect from a Sigma art lens. Again, making this a great choice for a wide range of shooting systems scenarios. Even wide open at f2.8, you're getting really good sharpness and contrast, whether in the center of your frame, and still really good results when we sort of go towards the corners as well. The results are also really consistent, whether you're at 24 millimeters, 40 millimeters, and 70 millimeters. So that only gets better and better, stepping down to f4 and f5.6. So the key thing for me really is that word consistency, something that I found was lacking on my old Tamron lens. Now, some of you may be wondering how the image quality compares to something like the Sony 24 to 70 G Master, the Mark 1 and Mark 2. Now I only had the Mark 1 version to compare this to, but honestly, I do not really see any major noticeable difference that would justify this significantly more expensive price tag. So I've been very happy with the results, especially for video with the FX6, for example. I mean, I'll just throw up some, some sample footage for you to see. I think the results just really speak for themselves. I'm super happy with what I can see. Generally, if we take a closer look at some of the many photos as well that I've taken with this lens, uh, on the a7r3 and again pin sharp when it needs to be great colors great contrast it's spot on in addition to in a bokeh as well while not as good as what you might find on like a prime lens it's still a nice upgrade over the messy backgrounds i used to get with my tamron 28. autofocus is another strong point of this lens that has made shooting with the sigma just such a breeze it is pretty much near silent and is also very snappy and responsive i've really had no issues at all using this with the a7s3 fx3 and fx6 using eye and face af and also it worked great with touch to focus focus and also subject tracking as well. When focus pulling as well, there also isn't any overly distracting focus breathing, which is always a nice plus. The only minor gripe is a very, very slight hunt occasionally when changing focus, but overall it's a really easy lens to focus with. Likewise for stills, I had zero issues using IAF, shooting portraits in both studio and also outdoor scenarios. It pretty much just locked on to the eye and stayed locked on throughout. Another big bonus is that the minimum focusing distance at 24 millimeters is a relatively short 18 centimeters. So you can get really, really close to subjects as well, which is great for getting those macro-ish type of shots. Now, the only big downsides of this lens that might be an issue for some people, firstly, is the lack of image stabilization. This is not a huge deal breaker for me personally, as cameras like the A7S3 and FX3 have IBIS built into the cameras, and with the FX6, for example, which, which doesn't, usually I just have this camera on a tripod anyway, or on, on a gimbal, but just something to be aware of. The other thing that wasn't an issue for me, but was for a colleague of mine, was the weight. So this is definitely not what I would call light it's 800 grams so it is something that you're going to feel if you're going to put this on a camera like the fx6 with a monitor a mic v-mount battery it's not going to be an easy rig to carry around on really long shoots the tamron for example by contrast is much much lighter it's much more of a compact lens so if you are someone who doesn't like heavier setups that's definitely going to be something to consider but in my opinion just go to the gym, lift some weights and then you'll be fine. So with all that being said, the beauty of this lens for me is just that it does everything well, but without some of the compromises that you might expect from a cheaper 24 to 70 type of zoom lens. It's really simple actually, it's easy to use, covers 95% of most people's shooting scenarios. Its image quality is consistently great. The build quality is on par with more expensive Sony offerings in my opinion, and all for the bargain price of just around a thousand pounds. So for me, it's a steal. Honestly, so if you are in the market for a utility do-it-all 
type of lens. Having owned the Tamron 28-75 and Sony G Master Mark 1 24-70, I honestly would recommend the Sigma over those lenses as I think this offers the best overall bang for the buck without having to compromise on too much. Anyway, I think I've rambled on a little bit too long, so I'll end the video here. Let us know what you think of the Tamron 24-70 and if you are using a similar 24-70 or zoom lens, let us know down there in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to see more. You can also follow us on socials down here. Any questions, let us know. And I guess I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. Peace.